So this segment is going to be on uh, fashion release with balls. So you can use any kind of ball you want. You can use tennis balls, you can use racket balls, you can use um, any uh, handball. Um, you can choose what ball is right for you because some people like a harder um, ball. It's kind of like getting a harder massage. And some people like um, softer balls. They are very sensitive and, it, and you need to use um, something softer. So with me is David Fink and David. Thanks, Renee. Tell you about yourself. I'm currently ranked number five on the WPA Trace Parade Pro Tour. Um, I also serve as the development director for the World Players of Handball. We put on a couple of thousand junior handball clinics each year. We also run the Pro Tour, so um, I also play tennis. So I'm here to help Renee here today to demonstrate some fascia release. Renee, thanks for having me. All right, thanks for coming. Okay, so we're going to start with the shoulders. Um, and my favorite ball is the Challenger 2, which is made um, in Ireland. It's the, uh, made by GAA and mainly because it is smaller and can get in, if David can turn around here, it can get in those little areas that might be tight around your shoulder and in between your spine and up by that trap levator right there. Okay, so when we're gonna start, we're gonna take that ball, and this is a fast workout. It's more for a warm up before you would go actually play your game. So we're gonna start like in the middle and go, this is David's scap, looks like Africa. This is, so you go around the scap all the way down towards um, your armpit here and then back up and around towards the top of the shoulder. And you only press hold two or three seconds, let go. So, but what we do is we put that ball in a sock because if we don't, it will drop and roll all over the floor. So, after you put that ball in your sock, shake it down, and then throw it over your shoulder, and then you're gonna go against the wall. You apply as much pressure as you um, feel comfortable with. Again, a couple seconds here, a couple seconds there. You can roll it, you can keep it in a spot that might be tender if you wanna keep it a little longer there and bend the knees a little bit kind of like an air bench position with your legs do not go on your spine just go in the soft tissue area and then take that ball put it on the other side and you might have like one shoulder that's always cranky and one shoulder isn't so you can um again gauge how long how much you want to press with that ball all right so then the next thing we do is we take a second ball, usually the same size, throw it in there, and then separate the balls in the sock so you have space in between those two balls. And then, David, can you turn around again, please? So then these balls are gonna go in between the spaces where your spine's gonna be. It's the balls gonna go in between the shoulders and the spine, and you're gonna roll it up, and then you're gonna get up again around that um, both shoulders and then just down to mid back area. Okay, so twist it up and then put it in your back. Again, go into your air bench position, bend the knees and roll the ball up and down in between. You control the pressure and then take it away. Okay, so the last part of the back is your lower back pelvis. So make a wider space between those two balls, and then you're going to put it right where, um, on the top, right on the sides of your pelvis, kind of where the glute uh, muscle comes in there. And all you're gonna do is roll a little bit right, a little bit left, and just kind of even out that lower pelvis a little bit. And it might be tight, maybe not. And sometimes you don't even know you're tight till after you're done and you think, wow, I'm really a lot looser and I can play my game better. Okay, so then um, we're gonna go to the calf. The calf is um, a smaller muscle. We're gonna come to the floor and sit. It is, doesn't get much blood flow. and doesn't get much fluid. And that's why a lot of times you do get um, cramps at night in your calf. 
So what you're gonna do is place that ball right under the calf, use your other foot for leverage, you again control the pressure, lift yourself up, drop your body weight on it, and you can either go um, on the side, outside of the calf. It does, it's, there's no wrong way to do it, but just don't go behind the knee joint. You can go up towards the knee, but not digging into the joint itself. Go on the inside, outside. So in the calf, you have your bigger gastroc on the outside, you have your soleus muscle on the inside. You're trying to get in between that to get the fascia tissue hydrated. Get down towards the Achilles, because that again, when you get down to those ligaments, there isn't much fluid in there, and they need to be stimulated there. And then do the other side. Let's just do the other side so we're balanced. And then um, we're gonna do the hamstring, but you need a bigger ball. So take either a racquetball or a tennis ball, put it under that hamstring. Again, lift yourself up, same thing. You can rub up and down, roll side to side. You can do a little femur rotation with that femur. Um, I kind of think the foam rollers are, e are better on hamstrings and quads, but if you don't have a foam roller, especially if you're traveling, like people who travel to tournaments, they, you know, it's so much easier to pack a ball or two little balls than it is for a whole foam roller or a half foam roller. Okay, um, other side of the hamstring. We'll just do this quick. and then take the ball away. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do are hands, and you don't have to do all these body parts, you can just pick the one that actually uh, may be um, having a problem. So we're on our knees, take the smaller ball again, you're going to press into that ball with the palm, but not really hard, so just to press and release, and what you're gonna do is press into the joints where the fingers come into your hand, um, all four fingers, and then thumb joint, and then you're going to go from fingertips to your wrist, and then you're gonna scribble, and go fast and little, because you want that friction to give you a, um, like a friction massage here. Figure eight, circles, whatever you wanna do, and then come down on that elbow, and go from fingertips to elbow on the other hand, so you are getting your forearm. You can also do this on a table with your hand and arm. You don't have to be on the floor. It's just I don't have a table in the room. <laughs> and then let's do the other side. So press and release. Two seconds. And press and release the joints. And then fingertips to wrist. Scribble. Fast and little. And then come down on the elbow. Get the forearm. And then come back up standing. Okay, so lastly, we have the feet. And so we have to take off your shoes for this. You can do socks, no socks. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, if you try to do this on a floor, um, whether you're doing your calf or your hand, uh, do it with something padding because the floor slips and it's hard to get that pressure on there on the floor. Okay, so with that ball, you're gonna put it on the floor, step onto it with the middle of your foot. You can hold onto a chair, hold on the wall if you have balance issues. And if you don't have balance issues, you can challenge yourself with balance even across the, the toes. Keep your ear, shoulder, hip, and um, knees, ankles in alignment. Ste again, two seconds, step and release. Move it to the joints of the um, toes, not the toes themselves. Press and release. Move it to the inside of the arch. This is tender, so be careful. Press and release. Inside arch towards the toe. Outside arch towards the heel. Outside of the side of the foot. Outside front, outside back. Put the toe down, shear the heel. Put the heel down, curl the toes, lift up, 
scribble any way you want. Really fast and little, because this one actually can feel, it, it does work. It makes you feel really good when you're done with this one. And then change legs. Does it, you feel the difference on that flip? You, yeah. I want to get off. It does feel good. And especially because the same thing, step and release. Um, when your foot is locked in a shoe, which we do when we're playing tennis and handball, rec ball, um, your muscles don't get to move and your ankles kind of a little bit trapped there too. So this kind of stimulates it. So inside arch, if you haven't done it, inside arch towards the ball of the foot, inside arch towards the heel, outside arch or outside heel, outside edge of the foot, outside edge, draw off the toe. Uh, heel goes right and left as the ball is in front of that heel bone. Then drop the heel, curl your toes around the ball, release, and then scribble. Again, there's not really a wrong way to do this. So really fast, really fast. And last one. Okay, so come off the ball and just put the ball down. Um, so in closing, I do want to thank uh, Vern Roberts for um, start, uh, giving me some handballs to start out with. Um, I also want to thank um, Mr. Mac McCormick um, in Ireland, who has donated balls to me too, um, the Challenger 2 balls. And um, I appreciate having all of the tournaments that we have here. And thank you, David, for joining us.